Hi, this is Daniel Hutchins, and today we're doing a screen rant double video discussion. So, this is going to be the first screen rant double video discussion. So, first, we're going to be talking about is Star Wars. Yep, so Star Wars repeated its Anakin mistake with Ben Solo. Among the many flaws of the Star Wars sequel trilogy is how it repeated its Anakin Skywalker mistake with his grandson Ben Solo. Okay, so Star Wars sequel trilogy has many flaws, as the studio decided to recycle many of the events and concepts seen from previous movies, and thus gave some of the new characters the same fate as some classic Star Wars ones. The big example is this is Ben Solo. With whom Star Wars repeated is Anakin Skywalker mistake, here's how. The history of Star Wars universe can be divided in three parts. Original trilogy, prequels, and sequels trilogy. With anthology movies, TV shows, and more in between to add more to the history of the one of the biggest and most important universes in the realm of sci-fi. Okay, so the original Star Wars trilogy introduced the audience to the characters that would lead the Skywalker saga. Luke Skywalker, Leia Organa, and Han Solo, while the prequels explored the backstory of Anakin Skywalker, from his days as a young slave in Tatooine, to his rise as a Sith Lord Darth Vader. Following the acquisition of Lucasfilms by Disney, the studio began working on a new trilogy, with the purpose of closing the arcs of the original characters, bringing the Skywalker saga to an end, and introducing a new generation of heroes and villains. However, these sequels weren't what the audience expected, as they mostly reused the original movie's stories, arcs, and more. In a Star Wars universe repeated one big mistake with its new antagonist turned hero, Ben Solo, played by Adam Driver. Related to this article is Star Wars how old Ben Solo was when he became Kylo Ren, but we're not talking about that, we're talking about something else. So, two of the new main characters in Star Wars sequels were closely related to the original heroes in the saga's prime villain. Rey, Daisy Ridley, turned out to be Shafe Palpatine's Anne McDiarmid granddaughter, and Ben Solo, Kylo Ren, was Leia and Han's only son in Luke's Apprentice. Ben Solo turned to the dark side and became a member of the Knights of Ren. His main goal was to finish what his grandfather started and he ended up repeating his same mistakes in a similar end, with both he and Anakin reaching redemption and becoming one with the Force, though it cannot be debated whether they truly deserved redemption after everything they did or not. Okay, when viewers met Anakin Skywalker in Star Wars Episode One, The Phantom Menace, he showed kindness towards all living beings and generosity. But he also had a deep fear of loss, which he never overcame and only grew with time. Following the death of his mother, Anakin carried sadness, guilt, and anger that contributed to his fall into the dark side. Sometime later, once he committed to the dark side, traits like his arrogance, impatience, and recklessness grew and defined his time as Darth Vader, during which he also became a genocidal megalomaniac. It's unknown what Ben Solo was like during his childhood as by the time viewers met him, he was already Kylo Ren, and just like his grandfather, he felt superior to others yet was constantly trying to prove himself. Kylo was also a murderous megalomaniac, but unlike Anakin, he tried hard to get rid of his attachments, while his grandfather always tried to go back to them, and yet after all this, they were redeemed in just one act. Both Anakin and Ben found redemption in their final appearances in the Star Wars universe, due to love. Anakin, when he decided to betray Palpatine in order to save Luke, sacrificing himself in the process, and Kylo sacrificed himself to bring Rey back to life after defeating Palpatine left her dead. So he used all his energy to power to revive her. It's still debated among Star Wars fans if they deserve to be redeemed or not especially after all the damage they caused across the galaxy. And Ben's very predictable, Ben Solo's story ended up being a mirror of Anakin Skywalker's, with its biggest flaws and redemption moment that probably shouldn't 
have happened, or at least not the way it did. And he wasn't given to be himself and create his own story. The Star Wars sequel trilogy is far from perfect, and among its biggest flaws is repeating past mistakes and making them even bigger with the new characters. So, there's the first article for the double article discussion. Next is going to be another article. If I can find one. Okay, so the next article for this double screen rant article discussion is the Suicide Squad. So the Suicide Squad first press reactions are very positive. Some early press reactions to the Suicide Squad appear in a new TV spot praising James Gunn's upcoming DC Extended Universe film for its action and spectacle. This was a day ago. Okay, so... Early press reactions to the Suicide Squad appear in a new TV spot, and so far they look very positive. James Gunn's R-rated sequel review is scheduled to release in the U.S. on August 6, bringing Gunn's interest style and managery of obscure DC characters to a big screen. The Suicide Squad features a star-studded ensemble cast including Margaret Robbie, Idris Elba, John Cena, Joel Kinnaman, Celeste Stallone, Viola Davis, Jay Courtney, and Peter Capaldi. Gunn's strong critical track record may look like enough on paper to guarantee success for the Suicide Squad, but the film has still had a share of doubters. That's mainly due to how poorly David Ayer's Suicide Squad was perceived upon its release, an issue that's largely been attributed to the same sort of studio meddling from Warner Brothers that led to the pan-theatrical cut of Justice League. The DC Extend Universe has also been pretty inconsistent over the past few years, making it hard to predict which projects will win high praise and which will fall short. Related to this article is the Suicide Squad, who is behind Project Starfish, every theory. But we're not talking about that, we're talking about something else. So according to a couple of early critical reactions, the Suicide Squad looks like it may be trending in the right direction. New trailers for the film aired during a halftime show of the Euro 2020 semi-final, England vs. Denmark, and included reactions from BBC Radio No. 1's Ali Plum, who called the movie a jaw-dropping spectacle, and Digital Spy, who gave the film 4 out of 5 stars. Of course, since those reactions were selected from Warner Brothers, specifically for the purposes of the TV spot, they may not be addictive of all the overall critical sentiment toward the film. The studio would obviously be ill-advised to share unfavorable thoughts on a Suicide Squad, and no other reactions or reviews have been made public at this time. So there are some tweets down below. You can check on Twitter, or you could go to Screen Rant. So, so far, the Suicide Squad certainly looks like it has a lot going for it. But the film is bringing back some of the most popular characters from the Ayers film, such as Barbie's Harley Quinn, Davis Amanda Wawa, Kinnaman's Red Flag, and Courtney's Captain Boomerang. We'll also bring in an exciting additions like Elba's Bloodsport and Cena's Peacemaker. Guns had great success with comic book ensembles before it and his Guardians of the Galaxy films, and the trailers for Suicide Squad have teased a great blend of those movies' colorful style and new, darker tone. Leading up to the Suicide Squad release, Gunn has also stated repeatedly that the film is one of his favorites he's ever made. The DC Extended Universe has been on a bit of a hot streak lately, with Wonder Woman 1984 and Zack Snyder's Justice League. Now, if the Suicide Squad can effectively balance Gunn's flambeau and style, with more grounded action and practical effects, it could be the franchise's most jaw-dropping spectacle yet. So, there you go, guys. That is a little bit of some information for this double screen rant article discussion. If you guys like this content, please hit that thumbs up button. And you guys have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. I might be doing another video today, since after all, it is a Thursday, so I figured I might do another video, maybe in a couple hours, or maybe pretty shortly. I don't know yet, so make sure you keep your eyes out for the next video, and again, 
As always, please subscribe. If you want to see more comic book related information and article discussions, for those who are interested, please, please check out my channel. And so, yeah, anyway. Sorry if I'm looping around the horn, but again, hoping you guys love this content. And like I said, wishing you guys the best for the rest of your day. Bye.